Bob 106.3. And now, it's Coast View with Ricky Matthews. Brought to you by J. Allen Toyota and AGJ Systems and Networks on Super Talk 103.1 FM. Welcome to Coast View, the show that celebrates the men and women every single day who are making coastal Mississippi such a great place to live, work, and play. And, man, we have a treat of a, of a show today. And I want to start with this. I actually walked into my guest bedroom this morning and over the bed there is a is a art by is art by walter anderson um i'm assuming that art like this like hangs in homes probably all over the world when you think about it He's such an appreciated artist and i think the more people who come in contact with him the more people who you know who appreciate him but but anyway, he's made incredible contributions uh, to Coastal Mississippi and, and to the art world in general. Um, I've, I've gained a deeper appreciation, though, for Walter Anderson as a result of my conversations with Julian Rankin, the executive director for the Walter Anderson Museum of Art, Ocean Springs. Um, we've spent a lot of time here on Coast View just talking about Walter Anderson and what he means to this area. Um, he's made such a great, uh, great contribution. It's it's not just his art though. He's he's a poet. He's he's a philosopher. Um, and I, you know, one point about Julian is that he's so incredibly articulate articulate about the subject of Walter Anderson. But there's a new intimate and really revealing documentary that that I have watched several times now by filmmakers Robert St. John and Anthony Thaxon that helped us gain a greater appreciation for Walter Anderson. And I would say a greater appreciation on a whole new level, really, a deeper level. Um, it's excellent. And I've, it's helped me understand Walter Anderson in ways that I didn't really understand it before because it, I, I don't know, something that's important about context. And the context of this particular documentary is, is really good. It's now the definitive documentary on Walter Anderson. But I want to share with you how it touched me. Um, if, you, if we only see Walter Anderson as a, as a prolific, uh, inspiring artist, uh, we're certainly going to be touched by him. You know, he, he was good. He, he was really good. But to gain a deeper appreciation for his contributions, you have to delve into his life and you have to delve into his writings a little bit more deeply. And when you do, you're going to be touched that, and I think probably amazed actually, that he was a profound philosopher and he was a really cool p poet. And he was a really deep thinker that he was trying to find this bridge between art and nature and humanity. And the way he wrote about it was just so profound, actually. Uh, he was always searching. In fact, he dedicated his life to this journey of searching, literally at the expense of everything else in his life, especially his family. He once wrote this, and I, I can relate to it, actually. Just remember discontent is one of the penalties of greatness. You know, he lived a life of discontent. He lived a life of searching. For 20 years, he lived, or excuse me, for 20 years, he visited uh, Horn Island uh, on a rowboat. His son said that, you know, later said of that, that experience, that the smaller the boat, the bigger the island appeared. And that was Horn Island he was talking about. He said that in a small boat, you could really feel nature. Walter Anderson, it, we came to know about him. He just coveted solitude. And his son said, though, that solitude was a tool that helped him find his unity with nature, that his father was attempting to realize the, his relation to nature so he could realize the beauty of humanity. And if you read his writings, you really do understand that about him. His son also said of his father that while he might have been often alone on the island, in, in, in the sense that he wasn't there with people, he was the least alone person that he knew. Uh, Walter Anderson later wrote, after years of long, deep immersion in Horn Island, he wrote this, all movement is, is excuse me, all movement is to invisible music. It comes from the sun and the wind and a running rabbit and a crowing cock. And together it is part of a great symphony. The longer we listen and the quieter we are, the more we hear. And when we do, and, and when we do hear, we are part of the music instead of an unwelcomed interruption. Uh, man, 
that describes sort of the feeling that I've always had when I'm like wade fishing at Horn Island. I've always had this sense that what I see and what I experience there is so much greater than me. Uh, the co cacophony of sounds that he talks about, you know, the birds and the rolling waves and the, the wind and the jumping mullet, that has always spoken to me when I've been at Horn Island. It, it, in a larger sense of nature, it, it gives you a larger sense of nature and how you fit into it. Um, I, uh, I was always drawn to Horn Island, but what Walter Anderson put in words and put in his art helped me get a better appreciation for that, helped me understand the connection that I sense. He put words to what I experienced, and he also put words to what I experienced in other areas of coastal Mississippi when I experienced them. I mean, he, he's just, it's just that profound. And this documentary helps you see that. Um, you know, what's really interesting to me that if you really want to get a deeper appreciation for Walter Anderson, you had to, and, and what his contributions are, you have to study his life. And it wasn't until we got this documentary that we got an opportunity to, to, to I, I would say, grow our appreciation for Walter Anderson. Um, so when I see that art sitting on top of the, of the bed in my guest room now, I, I just have to pause for a second and realize that this was a really powerful man that we had the benefit of having here in coastal Mississippi. And this incredible documentary about Robert St. John's and Anthony Thaxon helped us help me and will help you as well see this more clearly. So I'm pleased now to turn to my friend, Robert St. John, someone who's been on this show many, many times. I mean, he is a jack of all trades, if you just want to call it that. But it's great to see you back again on Coast View. And uh, it's, I'm really looking forward to discussing your Walter Anderson project. How are you doing, Robert? Good, Ricky. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It's good to be back. <clears throat> yeah. Thanks for the so work you uh, continue to do down there. Well, on the you, heard, you heard what I said. Um, it's true though. I mean, I, I would assume, you know, you spent your life down here. Your mother always believed that you needed, you, your dad wasn't around. So your mother bought that fishing camp over in Pascula river and you were experiencing life in much the same way. You had to have had the same kind of profound awareness that I had as you learned more about Walter Anderson's life. I think that has a lot to do with uh, how I connected with Anderson really at an early age. You know, my dad died when I was six and my mom knew uh, she couldn't play football with my brother and me and, you know, couldn't hunt, but she figured she could learn how to fish. And so we uh, we just bought a little small fish camp up John's Bayou right off Pine Island uh, up the Pascagoula River. And she's an artist. Her mother was an artist and her mother was an artist. and. And so that's how I ended up at Shearwater Pottery uh, when I was very young. And, uh, you know, we had one of those uh, linoleum block prints of the alligator that we got probably in the late 60s, early 70s that was always in our house growing up. And one thing about Walter Anderson that I believe, you know, I believe all great art has a sense of place. And I'm not sure, you know, you, you got Monet's Gardens, you know, there are all these artists with us. I don't know if there's ever been an artist who was more of his place than Walter Anderson. I mean, Walter, I mean, he traveled to China. He biked across China. I mean, he walked once in six months from Maryland to Mississippi, rode his bike to Tennessee, rode his bike to Texas, originally from New Orleans. But the coast was his place. And, um, you know, we're, we're just really fortunate uh, to be from here. And that's, you know, we, we wanted to do, we're, we're, we're working on a series of documentaries about notable Mississippians. And um, Anthony Thaxton and I, who is, who is truly a brilliant filmmaker. And if, if you've seen this documentary, you already know how talented, how talented Anthony is. If you haven't, then once you do see it, uh, you're gonna, you're gonna be really amazed and uh, we're, we're really proud of the work. And, and uh, it was an easy choice to do Walter Anderson right out of the shoot. You know, you're so much, I don't know how you decided what wasn't gonna make it into, into the documentary when you think about how powerful his writings were. Yeah. That had to have been agony trying to figure that out. Well, and that's all Anthony. Anthony is, is a great storyteller through film. He, uh, Anthony and I have worked together for about 20 years. 
um, on different uh, pro. I mean, Anthony is he's a he's a great artist, visual artist, uh, you know, in watercolor mediums and other mediums. He's a musician. He's a singer. He can play multi instruments. He's a filmmaker, an editor. I mean, just he's so talented, and and that's really him. And we we got the idea to do this. We were shooting our TV show, Palette to Palette, uh, down. Uh, we were doing a Mississippi episode on the coast, and we were in the Walter Anderson Museum uh, one night filming. And John Anderson, the youngest of the children, the four children, John showed up and was taking us through the little room, you know, that's there uh, that used to be attached to Anderson's cottage that's now at the museum, and was talking about when his mom and his aunt went into that room for the first time. And I'm sure all your listeners know the story, but but for those who don't, you know, he lived a pretty reclusive life at Shearwater Pottery, which was the family compound there in Ocean Springs. And they didn't really see him a lot about the last 20 or so years of his life. He'd go out to Horn Island and spend three weeks at a time painting. They never saw any real artwork. He kind of painted some of the pottery at Shearwater, but, um, all of the, all, they didn't see any work of, of his. And so uh, when, after he died, there was a lock on this room and they opened the room and it had been painted with this beautiful mural. And in a chest there were 2000 or more watercolors. And, and John said, uh, while we're touring that night, my mom used to say, you know, your dad would be a great artist if he weren't such a beachcomber. And then after they had that experience in the little room and they found all of this art that he left the world, she said, you know what? Your dad was such a great artist because he was a beachcomber. This is Robert St. John, and we're talking about Walter Anderson and the definitive documentary on his life and book, I might add. We'll talk more about that when we come back from break. Coast View on Super Talk 103.1 is brought to you by J. Allen Toyota on I-10 Exit 38 Gulfport. See all the incredible inventory at allentoyota.com. And remember, when you think Toyota, think J. Allen Toyota. It's 2021 and J. Allen Toyota still has a lifetime warranty on all new Toyotas. They all come with Toyota Care. We've got a great rental department. We've got great used cars. We've got a parts and service department ready to help you. So when you think Toyota, think J. Allen Toyota. If Alexa's part of your life, you've got one more way to access Super Talk. Super Talk Mississippi is now available on Amazon Alexa devices. Once enabled, just say Alexa Play Super Talk Mississippi at any time and start listening. It's that easy. Just one more way to stay informed and connected with your state. Learn more at supertalk.fm slash Alexa. Super Talk Mississippi. Super Talk Mississippi. Now available on Amazon Alexa devices. When COVID started, Gulf Coast Business Furniture and Supply began stocking hard-to-find PPE items. When Amazon and other mega internet companies were out of stock or inflating prices, Gulf Coast Business Furniture and Supply was providing local schools and businesses vital PPE supplies at fair prices. When your office needs PPE supplies, office furniture, or products to keep your business operating, consider Gulf Coast Business Furniture and Supply. We sell that too. Buy local. Thousands of Bulldog fans have subscribed to the Thunder and Lightning podcast. Have you? On each episode, Brian Haydad and Joel Coleman give you an inside look at your Mississippi State Bulldogs. The Thunder and Lightning podcast is free and available on demand at supertalk.fm and on your smartphone. Just search for Thunder and Lightning on iTunes, Google Play, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Thunder and Lightning from Supertalk Mississippi. Covering the Bulldogs like no one else. Super Talk Mississippi. From outer space, visitors from another world. We've had contact with bug eyed monsters. This is actually a flying saucer. Flying saucer. I'm from another planet. Where late nights are kind of weird. Well, they must have a reason for their visit. The unexplained, the weird, and the downright creepy. Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. Late nights. Super Talk Mississippi. Feeling down? 
Here's your prescription for a daily dose of good news and positive vibes. Good Things with Rebecca Turner. Every afternoon, Rebecca highlights all the good things happening right here in the state you call home. Daily exposure to good things with Rebecca Turner may cause smiling, feelings of positivity, happiness, and even laughter. When you experience these symptoms, tell your friends to listen. Okay. Weekdays starting at 2 p.m. here on Super Talk Mississippi and now on Amazon Alexa devices. Hey, guess what? Bob is back. Now at 106.3, playing the 80s, 90s, and whatever. Check us out. The new Bob 106.3. This is Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome back to Coast View. We're having a conversation with Robert St. John about the new sort of de- definitive documentary on Walter Anderson, and there's a uh, there's a book as well. What I, what I wanted to say, though, what was really important about this documentary for me, having long known a lot about, about Walter Anderson, but if I look back before the documentary, my knowledge was kind of jagged. I didn't necessarily understand where China fit in. I didn't really understand... When was he in New Orleans? When did they buy land at Shearwater? How did Maryland fit into this? When did he go to the mental, mental institution? What was the relationship between ma- malaria and that? You know, I, you know what? I would say that the, the documentary is so good because it, 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 it helps you keep everything in context. For, for example, I didn't realize that China was so that, – that he started the, the, the murals in the community center when he came back from China – and how it in, impacted him and how people kind of pushed back on it. You know, they said, I don't know if we like this or not. Yeah. And uh, it was also interesting to see that he probably, some of his greatest art was covered up by himself. <laughs> it was all yeah. part of the process. But what I loved about what he came to understand about it is that the art in and of itself was a byproduct of what his real search was all about. That's the cool thing about this whole story related to Walter Anderson, isn't it? Yeah, the art was just part of the process. It, it didn't mean a lot to him. I mean, he used it to light fires. And, I mean, they found Sissy, his wife, um, when they went into the cottage. I mean, they found a big stack of those watercolors that he did on that that had been just put in the fireplace. And and the stack was so large, I think it put out the fire. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, 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 he was in search of... Just it seems to me just being one with nature. And you're right. He was a poet and he was a big thinker. Uh, he's to me, he's one of Mississippi's greatest big thinkers. I mean, he it and and I guess a lot of that solitude on the island really, you know, allows you to, you know, uh get really, really deep in your thoughts. And then he was he was such a great writer. And this documentary, what what we wanted to do and what Anthony chose to do so wisely. I'm the producer on this and had some suggestions, but it's really he's the director and, and the editor, and Anthony made some excellent decisions. And we went, it's the story as told by the ones who knew him best, which are his four surviving kids. We have recordings of his wife and then some other family members. And uh, we got to know the family very well during this process. And, um, you know, it, it, it was pretty, I mean, when, when you want to you wanna know about a family, you want to know about a person, you, you go to the people who knew him best. And they gave us total access. We had total access to, you know, the vault, to all the paintings. The museum was great, which is a crown jewel of the coast, in my opinion. That, mm-hmm. that museum is awesome. They gave us total access. We interviewed all of them. And, uh, you know, we wanted this to be the guidepost that I kept telling Anth, what we need is the person, the, the PBS viewer in Portland, Oregon, and the PBS viewer in Bangor, Maine, and everybody in between who have never heard of Walter Anderson. We want them to know the whole person and what is life. But with so many people in, in you know, even people on the co, you know, the the quick automatic uh, simplistic way to sum up all, oh, he was crazy, you know, and and that's really when you when you dig deep, that's debatable. Um, yeah, you know, you can't be crazy and that productive. There's just no way to have been as productive he was. And like you mentioned, both times he ended up in a mental hospital. He first he checked himself in. 
Um, he wasn't committed. He checked himself in, and it was both times after he had contracted malaria. Mm -hmm. And um, and his brother, he and his brother were in one at the same time. Uh, Jill Connor Brown tells the story. I wrote in the afterward to the book you mentioned. Um, I loved it. My favorite Walter Anderson story, and there are a bunch of them. But when he was in the mental institution, um, and and again he was he was there of his own volition, checked himself in, but he left in the middle of the night one night, and he did the classic tying the sheets together and you know lowering them down the the window and, and the wall from either the second or third floor. And as he climbed down, he took a bar of ivory soap and drew birds on the brick wall as he climbed down. And to me, that's just so that sums up the man he was even in that moment you know he's creating art and it's the the, the bird which is i guess the freest of all yeah. animals um you know he symbolized that and it's just you know it's he, he was an amazing person and then you know when he came back from the mental institution a lot of his art was from sort of aerial views of things so he yeah. sort of saw himself as the bird flying over yeah. shearwater pottery and other places and Anthony did a great job. You'll see in the in the what what is so impressive about Anderson taking these up. He had never seen Shearwater pottery from that angle or Horn Island from that angle. But when Anthony got the drone up in the air and did the shots, I mean, he nailed it. It's and, it's, it's very, and that's very so interesting. Impressive. But what yeah. it was, I, I think he was a genius, literally a genius. And Agreed. he since this quest to understand humanity and nature and how they fit together that's why when i in my opening comment you know first of all the way it was done in the in the documentary having a voice that could be similar to walter anderson doing these quotes it sort of reminded me of um of Ernest Hemingway, I'm a big, you know, big Ernest Hemingway fan. But when he talked about the, all movement is invisible music, and he went on to say they together this great symphony. The longer we listen, the quieter we are, and the quieter we are, the more we hear. And when we do hear, we are part of music instead of an unwelcome interruption. That's powerful. Yeah. He came <laughs> to understand that, didn't he? Yeah. He's a poet. I mean, he's a poet. We're uh, we're working on another book with uh, with the family and John Anderson, who will uh, edit it and everything. You know, they're the Horn Island Logs, which are his writings. Uh, and uh, we're working on our next book. In addition to, there's a companion piece uh, to the documentary, Walter Anderson, um, about his life and art. Uh, so the book comes out in a couple of weeks, but but next year or soon thereafter, will be the bicycle logs, which were his ride. I mean, he rode his bike all over the place. I mean, it's just an, he was, he was an amazing thinker. He was just a big thinker and a talented guy. Well, he, you know, the, okay. So I, I remember, I guess as one of his daughters was, was referring to the time that he got in the boat, at, or the, the small sailing craft at the age of 15 and decided to go to new Orleans and, and Lake Bourne storm comes up. He ends up hanging. They thought he was dead. ends up hanging, on a beacon or something for two or three days and he said he's never going to do that again and that and he and he and he did it again for the rest of his life yeah but it was part of who he was wasn't it yeah that's right and he was actually living it he was born in new orleans and he lived first part of his life before he went to art school and everything in new orleans and then you know the family uh his mom went over and they bought shearwater um pottery uh that that compound there but yeah he you know he, he would take a small boat out to ship i mean to horn island actually he went to other barrier islands he went to horn the most he liked horn the most but he would row out he'd had a bed sheet for a sail he tumped over a lot of the time you know his art he, it was all done on typing paper and i was talking to john anderson at the peter anderson festival last week a few days ago and he said, because of the block prints, you know, and those were all done on the backs of wallpaper, uh, Walter Anderson's mom, and this is in the documentary, believed that everybody should surround themselves with beautiful things and certainly beautiful art. And Walter Anderson wanted that art to be available uh, to as many people as it could. That's how he was paid $1 for the mural you're talking about in the community center in Ocean Springs, which actually was debated on whether they needed to paint over it or not. I've talked to somebody who grew up in the in the late 50s, early 60s, and they used to just tape posters over it 
when they had dances in there. And that thing's probably valued at sixty million dollars today or whatever. But you know, he that's why he worked on type and paper, because type and paper was inexpensive. Um you know, it was it was as readily available. He did sell the block prints. He didn't sell a lot of art in his lifetime. Those block prints, which predate Picasso's large scale block prints, um, sold for like a dollar a foot. Uh, pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. He he. When when talking about visiting Horn Island, he says celestial beings are allowed to visit there. Providence made an exception in my case. That's right. But. Good Lord. I mean, th and you know what? If you study his art and then you go spend time at Horn Island, which I spend as much time there as I possibly can, you see in the detail of that place, whether it's a shell or whether it's a horseshoe crab or whether it's a bird or the trees, just in context, you see Walter Anderson all over that place, don't you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's um and and you see why he wanted to go out there so much. And I think that the family obviously didn't understand. They well, number one, they, I don't think they had any clue he was being as productive um, as he is, and and when was. And then you know, they find all of that work, and then they understood. Well, okay, well, this is what he was doing while he was out there. Yeah, it's just it's just really incredible, Robert St. John. Uh, it's been a pleasure to catch up with you to talk about the incredible documentary on, on Walter Anderson. What I would recommend people do, just go put Walter Anderson documentary in Google. Bam, it pops up. Watch it. I found myself, again, I've watched it three or four times. Every time I see it, I see something different. But it's truly it's inspiring. As a coastal Mississippian, it helps you gain a greater appreciation for this sense of place that we have here. And man, did Walter Anderson understand that. Thank you, Robert. I really appreciate it, my friend. Be on the lookout for the book, too. Thanks, Ricky. Oh, you bet. It was hung up in a ship off the coast of the Port of California, and it will soon arrive. So look forward to getting it for sure. Take care, my friend. Thanks, bud. You bet. Take care. Hey, guess what? Bob is back. Now at 106.3, playing the 80s, 90s, and whatever. Check us out. The new Bob 106.3. Feeling down? Here's your prescription for a daily dose of good news and positive vibes. Good Things with Rebecca Turner. Every afternoon, Rebecca highlights all the good things happening right here in the state you call home. Daily exposure to good things with Rebecca Turner may cause smiling, feelings of positivity, happiness, and even laughter. When you experience these symptoms, tell your friends to listen. Okay. Weekdays starting at 2 p.m. here on Super Talk Mississippi and now on Amazon Alexa devices. Hey, South Mississippi, the future has arrived. It's 2021, and at J. Allen Toyota, we're here to serve you. Want to let you know that we have Allen's lifetime warranty on every new Toyota we sell. That also comes with Toyota Care. That's two years and 25,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. We have a great rental department. Our service department's ready to take care of your current vehicle. We're rolling out J. Allen's certified pre-owned for 2021. You got to come to I-10 Exit 38 right here in Gulfport. You're going to love what we have to offer. When you think Toyota, think Allen Toyota. Get the scoop on what happened in college football and what to expect in the NFL each Sunday on Sports Sunday with Michael Borky. Get the story behind the stats, 8 to 10 a.m. on Super Talk Mississippi, supertalk.fm, and watch the show on supertalk.tv. Super Talk Mississippi, we're more than just words. This is where the story of your state is told. Proud to cover the Magnolia State like nobody else. Super Talk Mississippi. Super Talk Mississippi. From outer space, visitors from another world. We've had contact with bug eye monsters. This is actually a flying saucer. Flying saucer? I'm from another planet. Where late nights are kind of weird. Well, they must have a reason for their visits. The unexplained, the weird, and the downright creepy. Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. Late nights. Super Talk Mississippi. Hey, I'm Steve Azar, and you never know who or what you'll hear when I spend a Mississippi Minute with my friends. 
talking yeah. to Paul Thorne, Mississippi, true treasure, uh, really incredible recording artist, singer, songwriter, has been doing it a long time, doing it the right way. It's almost like a Forrest Gump thing because uh, you know, I was a boxer, slash, I worked in a furniture factory, slash, I had a gig two nights a week playing my acoustic guitar in a pizza restaurant, slash, I was in the National <laughs> Guard, and wow. uh, you know, all this stuff was going on at the same time. Slash, I had a writing contract with Rick Hall and Fame. In a Mississippi Minute. Be sure to check out In a Mississippi Minute with me, Steve Azar, right here on Super Talk Mississippi, the Super Talk Mississippi app, and now available on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. For something new and unique in talk radio, take a listen to The Ben Shapiro Show. Every day, we're driving the debate in America with the fastest moving, hardest hitting, most comprehensive fact-based commentary on the radio. We don't hold back. We never shy away from telling you the truth. Our show is a meeting place of ideas. We have the most important guests and the biggest thinkers in America. Weeknights at 9. For something new and unique in talk radio, take a listen to The Ben Shapiro Show. On Super Talk Mississippi. Super Talk Mississippi. Just, just seems to me people have so much invested in not telling the truth. When you want the truth. Simply because it might hurt some feelings. And nothing but the truth. Lose some subscribers. You want the Gallo Radio Show. I just think in this audience, you still believe that if you tell the truth, you come out ahead. The Gallo Radio Show. And if you tell yourself otherwise, you're lying to yourself. Mornings on Super Talk Mississippi. Hey, guess what? Bob is back. Now at 106.3, playing the 80s, 90s, and whatever. Check us out. The new Bob 106.3. And now, it's Coast View with Ricky Matthews. Brought to you by J. Allen Toyota and AGJ Systems and Networks on Super Talk 103.1 FM. Welcome back to Coast View. Uh, we're going to be talking with Robbie D'Angelo here in just a second, but I just wanted to reflect a little bit on the conversation we just had with Robert St. John uh, about this incredible documentary they did for, uh, around Walter Anderson. And, you know, when you think about this quote, let me, let me read this quote again that I shared, something that he wrote later in his life, and it's just so powerful. All movement is to invisible music. It comes from the sun and the wind and a running rabbit, and a, and a crowing cock. And together, it is part of a great symphony. The longer we listen and the quieter we are, the more we hear. And when we do hear, we are part of the music instead of an unwelcome interruption. I love the way he said that. I mean, Walter Anderson, what a philosophical man, what a poetic man, what a great artist. The other thing that he said is that just remember discontent is one of the pen penalties of greatness. Just remember discontent is one of the penalties of greatness. I mean, he never was satisfied. I can remember in my, my, my life, you know, my career um, as a CEO for 15, 16 years, I, I was never satisfied. I was always searching for that new thing. But I was also trying to find that peace that he referred to in that first quote that I that I that I read that all movement is is to invisible music that it, you know, life and humanity and nature all kind of together in this symphony in life and when you find that place if you're able to find that place there's a peace and a an harmony that comes from that I just love that and uh, in some ways that all of that applies to my next guest Robert D'Angelo he describes himself as a human optimization coach he's been on the show countless times over the last couple of years he uh, he moved down to Florida because you know you in a, in a way you were feeling discontent in a way you were trying to find this new Robbie Anderson I mean Robbie listen Ro Wal Ro Walter Anderson this new Robbie D'Angelo you were trying to take your game to a next level. In order to do that, you wanted to find another uncomfortable space to get in so you could push your game to the next level. You relate to all that, don't you? 
I absolutely do. Like, I, I love the part about dance with the music because I feel, <clears throat> you know, without getting too much into quantum physics, all we are is energy. So the more we can feel that music, the more we can go with where the energy leads us to be. And yeah, you know, it's discontent. While we want to be proud of everything we've done and really be comfortable in who we are, it is that striving for greatness. Tony Robbins talks a lot about that. Like one of the ultimate levels of human fulfillment is striving for progression and progression is like one of those intrinsic human needs. And I absolutely am addicted to that. Yeah, I, and, and to be honest with you, I am too. And it's one of the reasons why I enjoy this show because after having been retired for four years or so, they had the opportunity to come back. And now January 6th will be two years that I've been doing Coast View. But the opportunity I have to continue to connect with people like you that uh, helps me in my game. Like we're going to get into this in just a second, but this is a tough time of year for people from a physical point of view, from a fitness point of view. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, what people might be able to do to, to come out of the holidays, maybe a little bit behind the, the eight ball, but not so far behind the eight ball that they hate themselves completely. We'll go, we'll go there in just a second. But, you know, Robbie, you and I have talked about this many times before, and that is to, to really begin to, to take your game to the next level. I think one of the most important things you have to do is think about the people that surround you. you know, are, are the people who surround you, are they positive or are they negative? Are they tearing you down or building you up? And, and too often we get caught in this kind of rhythm of life that, that makes us accept where we are. And in order to, to take your game to the next level, if you don't like where you are, sometimes you just need to change the people around you. You know, what, what uh, you, you mentioned Zig Ziglar, but what Zig Ziglar said uh, was if, uh, you know, you have to change what goes into your mind if you really, really want to change. And the people who surround you are a big influence, aren't they? Well, it's, it's like we always talk about your mental diet is often more important than your physical diet because it influences your physical diet. <clears throat> the mental diet is everything you consume from the energy of the people you're around to the social media, the news media outlets, what you're reading, um, what you're listening to. <clears throat> you know, a joke that I always throw out when I talk in front of um, big crowds, I actually told us to a company this past week, is for instance, like country music, because most of it's really negative and kind of down, it's actually used in torture. So, you know, knowing stuff like that, you, you start to see how powerful your mental diet is. And the more consciously aware we can be, you know, just aware of what's coming in, the more we can affect what's coming out of us. Yeah. So you've been on this journey. You've been on this journey to constantly find and search for and achieve the best version of yourself in the moment. And that's one of the reasons that drove you down to Florida. But how are you doing? How do you assess your your achievement of that goal these days? So really, like the way I look at progression um, in my life is one of the sayings that I love the most is the amount of money I make is nothing more than a measuring stick of how many people I help. So like that, you know, that's kind of my metric that I use, but I'm just on this just driven mission um, to help as many people as possible. And I was like, I was telling you before we got on, I just got off like a three city speaking tour. And it was just, it was amazing to see like how hungry people are right now for change, how hungry people are for just positivity. Um, and it, it just, it almost like reignited my mission and my furnace to go out there and just do more. And the more that I do, the more I, I see the need. And it just it just keeps snowballing into more and more momentum. And it's, it's, it's a lot of progression right now, and it's a lot of fun, too. Well, you know, it's so funny the way you talk about it, because um, <clears throat> it's, it's about when you connect with others, it helps reignite or ignite your passion for whatever that connection was, whatever that, whatever. And yours, it's about helping people get the, the most out of life. If I had to describe Coast View, it's about trying to touch people in so many different ways and demonstrate to people that what it takes, not that, but what it takes to create a great community, a great set of communities, the kind of people that it takes to create a great set of communities. And, it, you know, it's funny because sometimes I'll be having a conversation with someone and I'll think to myself, gosh, I've really never thought of it that way. I've never thought of you know, leading a, a volunteer organization that way before, or I never thought about the reason why I would go and get engaged in the community 
I've never thought of it in that way before. So the truth is, you know, and I've said this with you before, and I've said on the show many times, the more we learn, the more we better learn how much we don't know, that life is a journey of discovery. And, and, and again, the more you learn, the more humble you better get. I mean, you're, it, may, it should make you thirsty for learning more. And what's cool about you when you give a speech that helps people in the realm of human optimization, and when you get that energy, you get, you're getting energy from them. And it's reminding you know you why it's important for you to continue to take your game to the next level because if you're at that next level, you can contribute more. And it just kind of feeds off itself, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, like I started this whole journey because I wanted to fix myself. And I, I wanted to improve my life. I was tired of hurting. I was tired of suffering. And I was just tired of like all the negativities in my head. So that's why I started this journey. But what keeps me on this journey is I now want other people to feel how I feel. I want more people to experience what it's like to actually have peace and fulfillment in their life. And that's really what fuels me. It fuels me to keep reading books and to keep learning as much as possible because I, I want to change as many lives as I can. And I want to be as effective doing that as possible because like I said, it just goes back to, I want people to get the most out of their life. I want people to really live life to the fullest and the only way we're gonna be able to do that is by changing our belief system and changing the way we see ourselves. So that's why I'm just hell bent on learning as much as possible and proving myself <clears throat> so I can pay that forward to other people. You know, what, what's interesting, what I've always been, been impressed with, number one, you, you're a good communicator. Number two, you're humble about that life's this quest to, to, of knowledge and you, you haven't arrived in other words because you know so often we say of individuals or even businesses the day you think you've arrived you start to fall backwards but I'm impressed with the fact that you, you you're driven by a humility to want to know more and it's not just sort of the mental game behind it all but it's also the physical game so you you're you've been working really hard to take your physical fitness to a whole new level. And you've been on that, that road for a while, but you really are, are focused on living by example, both in terms of the mental game and the physical game. And that's probably one of the keys to your success, isn't it? I, I have a firm like moral grounding and personal integrity. It's one of my like leading values in my life. And that's basically, it's like me keeping the promises that I make to myself but it also goes like one of the big things with personal integrity is I have to practice what I preach. I can't stand in front of, you know, hundreds of people in an audience and tell them to live a certain way. If I'm not doing it first, that's not an alignment when you do those kinds of things. So I have to practice personal integrity and it just gives me that, like, like I was talking about earlier, it gives me that peace knowing that I'm not asking you to do anything that I haven't first done myself. And it allows me to speak with so much more conviction and passion because I've been there. I know what it's like to go through what I'm about to tell you to do. Well, it's contagious. It's contagious. And people need process. They need to know that there is a, there's a road, road map that will help me get to success, to success. And the content is sort of the motivation that comes with that from having conversations with people like you. Hey, when we come back, we're going we're gonna to continue our, our conversation with Robbie D'Angelo, a human optimization coach. And I want to talk about some, some tips that he might share with you to help you get through the holidays where you don't come out on the other side totally hating the choices that you made. We'll come back to this one when we get back to the break. We'll see you after this. Hey, guess what? Bob is back. Now at 106.3, playing the 80s, 90s, and whatever. Check us out. The new Bob 106.3. Hey, South Mississippi, it's Jay Allen at Jay Allen Toyota, and I got something new for you for 2021. It's the Jay Allen Certified Collection. What that means is we selected our very best inventory with under 75,000 miles, and they're six years old or newer. That comes with a multi-point inspection, a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty, and a three-day buyback guarantee. So come check out the Jay Allen Certified Pre-Owned Collection right here at 10 Exit 38 in Gulfport or on allentoyota.com. 
When COVID started, Gulf Coast Business Furniture and Supply began stocking hard-to-find PPE items. When Amazon and other mega internet companies were out of stock or inflating prices, Gulf Coast Business Furniture and Supply was providing local schools and businesses vital PPE supplies at fair prices. When your office needs PPE supplies, office furniture, or products to keep your business operating, consider Gulf Coast Business Furniture and Supply. We sell that too. Buy local. Super Talk Mississippi, your new home for the Ben Shapiro Show. We don't hold back. We never shy away from telling you the truth. The most electrifying national talk show on air today. We have the most important guests and the biggest thinkers in America. Ben Shapiro, brutally breaking down the issues of the day. From politics to pop culture, we take a look at all of it. So don't miss out. Weeknights at 9. For something new and unique in talk radio, take a listen to the Ben Shapiro Show. On Super Talk Mississippi. Super Talk Mississippi. Just just seems to me people have so much invested in not telling the truth. When you want the truth. Simply because it might hurt some feelings. And nothing but the truth. Lose some subscribers. You want the Gallo Radio Show. I just think in this audience, you still believe that if you tell the truth, you come out ahead. The Gallo Radio Show. And if you tell yourself otherwise, you're lying to yourself. Mornings on Super Talk Mississippi. Thousands of Bulldog fans have subscribed to the Thunder and Lightning podcast. Have you? On each episode, Brian Haydad and Joel Coleman give you an inside look at your Mississippi State Bulldogs. The Thunder and Lightning podcast is free and available on demand at supertalk.fm and on your smartphone. Just search for Thunder and Lightning on iTunes, Google Play, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Thunder and Lightning from Supertalk Mississippi. Covering the Bulldogs like no one else. Hey, I'm Steve Azar, and you never know who or what you'll hear when I spend a Mississippi Minute with my friends. We're talking to Dale Barra. Take me back to growing up and what it was like in the household with a dad like Yogi Berra. You know, we grew up with his funny sayings. You know, I remember dad managing the mess, and me, Larry, and Timmy are watching the game on TV, and all of a sudden... Two streakers run out of the stands on TV and the camera flips away from them. So when he gets home, me, Larry, and Timmy say, hey, Dad, those streakers, what were they, boys or girls? We need to know. And Dad looked us right in the eye and said, I couldn't tell. They had bags over their heads. (laughs) In a Mississippi minute. Be sure to check out In a Mississippi Minute with me, Steve Azar, right here on Super Talk Mississippi, the Super Talk Mississippi app, and now available on iTunes, Google Play. Hey, guess what? Bob is back. Now at 106.3, playing the 80s, 90s, and whatever. Check us out. The new Bob 106.3. Talking to the people that help make the coast such a unique place to live. This is Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome back to Coast View. You know, the holidays are are upon us. And, um, you know, for me, obviously family and friends and all this stuff, but I go, I spend a lot of time in the Delta and I have great neighbors. And uh, one of my neighbors, uh, his, his name is Keith Connor. He's actually a highway patrolman, I might add. And his mother lives just down the street, you know, across the street from him. All this is country stuff. Well, the bottom line is when they learn we're coming to town, his mother always cooks some kind of dessert. And dude, let me just tell you, like she does a, a certain uh, recipe that is essentially is re- a homemade Reese's cup. You know, it, oh my gosh, is it good? And it, and I'm not, you know, you can ask Ann. I don't have a big sweet tooth, but when I go, to, I mean, she's like uh, uh, pecan pie and apple pies and all. Well, look, it's okay, I guess, to have that every now and then. The problem is, you know, she'll have it, we'll have it on Friday night, and then it will be there for Saturday night. It'd be there for Sunday if you want it. And this is the story of everyone during the holidays. There's there's a Mrs. Connor in everyone's life that's bringing, <laughs> bringing desserts to them. And how should I look at desserts? I mean, just talk about me, man. How should I look at you know, when I go to the camp and these desserts get there? Do I just deprive myself or talk to me about that? 
Well, you, you should absolutely enjoy it. Um, <clears throat> to say that, look, I'm trying to become a professional bodybuilder. And to say that I'm going to go through the holidays without eating dessert, like you're crazy. Um, I have a, like you may not, I have a huge sweet tooth. So I'm going to enjoy my desserts. But the key is like, you know, don't overindulge. Have a little bit and enjoy it. Taste it. Just like let it sink in about how amazing this is. But then don't eat the whole thing. Just eat your couple bites and feel it and then let it go. And then absolutely don't take it home with you. <laughs> well, I tr listen, I try not to, man. It's, 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 uh, I don't, I, I definitely don't take it home. But look, <clears throat> everyone's facing these challenges, you mm -hmm. know, leftovers, lots of food. It's, you know, a lot of parties, you know, it's, it's tough. What are some of your survival tips that you have for people for during the holidays? Well, like, I, I really call this the uh, season of procrastination. We're about to go into the season where everybody's going to say, I'll start on the first. I'll start after New Year's. I'll start, and then it, New Year's turns into Mardi Gras, which turns into summer. Like, it's just this whole procrastination thing we're about to go into. So the, the one thing you have to do is just really clarify, like, what you want to accomplish during the holidays. Like, my goal is, like, I want to enjoy myself but I don't want to destroy myself in the process. Um, so some survival techniques would be, hey, walk as much as possible. You know, after you eat a big meal, go take the whole family and y'all go have like a walk and talk and just talk about what you're grateful for. Um, don't forget to go work out. Uh, don't overindulge in the alcohol. And if you do, make sure that you do some type of activity the next day um, to kind of burn it off. There's, there's this balance that you can find during the holidays where you're enjoying yourself, but you're not destroying yourself. Um, but you have to enjoy yourself. That's the biggest thing. And one of the biggest tips I give people is try not to stress during the holidays. You're, you have all these priorities and all these things going on, especially, you know, trying to buy presents for everyone and go to all the parties. Stress is going to be the number one thing that leads to weight gain and lead to you feeling like crap over the holidays. Um, and it's actually scientifically proven. If you stress about the food you eat, you will store more of it. So you might as well just enjoy it. <laughs> so you've mentioned to me off air about a specific survival guide. How do people, how could they have access to that? Yeah, actually, I'm going to, um, guys, I have a uh, holiday survival guide with 12 tips um, to help you get through the holidays and not destroy um, all your health goals. So I'm actually going to make it available in my free Facebook group. Just simply go to www.joinoperationabundance.com, and I will make this guide available to everyone um, in that group for free. Oh, thank you. I, I really appreciate you doing that. This is this is a common conversation you have these days, isn't it? This is a conversation I have every year um, because it's an issue every year. And like I said, it's it's only an issue because people put their goals on hold during the holiday. And then they just say, oh, I'll start it again after the first. It'll be part of my New Year's resolution. And then they put themselves behind the eight ball because they overindulge, they procrastinate, and they just put their goals on hold. And then they start with a New Year's resolution. Instead of starting it from a maintenance, now they're starting from plus 10 to 20 pounds, and they're having to dig themselves out of a hole. And that hole, you've seen that hole get deep, haven't you? Whew, it, it gets really deep. Um, and actually, like, those huge what weight fluctuations that most people go through every year, it's actually proven to be really unhealthy for you. You know, if you can just maintain, like, you know, that that – five pound weight fluctuation during the year, it's not bad for you at all. But when you start seeing these like 20, 30 pound fluctuations that people go through every year, that's when it starts to get really unhealthy. It gets very, very dangerous very quick. Robbie D'Angelo, as usual, man, thank you so much for, for joining us. We really appreciate you. And you've been a great friend to uh, the Coast U. I'm glad you're getting to spend time on the Coast from time to time. And uh, you know, stay connected here. And uh, if 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 no other way, you're going to be connected through country, and we appreciate it, buddy. I love it. Thank you so much, Ricky. I always appreciate it and love our talks. You bet. We will uh, we will talk to Ravi again in the near future. Until then, uh, have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow.
Follow Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1 on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Super Talk MS Coast 103.1. 